Today on Infertility TV, we are going to address a recently released video from comedian Adam Conover. Adam is the host of Adam Ruins Everything, which can be seen on YouTube channel College Humor and on True TV. Adam's show attempts in a humorous way to reveal the real truths behind commonly held ideas about online dating, marriage, immigration, football, and Mount Rushmore. Oh, and Adam, if you're watching, please don't get the wrong idea. We at Infertility TV love college humor and the Adam Ruins Everything episodes, so please don't be offended. How do you think we found this episode in the first place? Recently, Adam released an episode called Adam Ruins Having a Baby or Adam Ruins Pregnancy. In this episode, he tries to dispel some myths about aging and fertility. Specifically, he and an author of a book try to make the case that fertility after age 35 does not decline very much so that women don't really need to worry about it. When I watched this video, I immediately saw that there were several incorrect and misleading statements. Misleading statement number one. Adam and the author imply that the only evidence that fertility declines with age comes from studies of rural French census records from the 1600s and this historical population has little relevance for today's modern women. I should mention at this point that Adam does list the sources for many of his statements on his website on True TV. I'm sure that most of his viewers don't go to this website and actually look up the sources and read the articles that these statements are based on, but we at Infertility TV are not most people. So let's take this first assertion. It comes from this article from a respected fertility journal called Human Reproduction. This study does in fact use data from French census records. Why did they use this population? Well, for one, as the article states, it can be assumed that fertility control did not exist in these populations or that if it existed, it was fairly ineffective. So, it was a nice population to study without the confounding factors of contraception which affects a lot of today's fertility studies. But we have lots of other studies with modern women that show that fertility starts decreasing at a relatively young age and continues to decrease until the woman is unable to have a pregnancy. For example, let's look at the Hutterites. The Hutterites are a religious group that migrated to the U.S. from Switzerland in the 1870s and now live in the Dakotas, Montana, and parts of Canada. They are believers in large families and in fact try to have as many kids as they can, which is viewed as a religious obligation. The Hutterite community supports all children equally, so having more children wouldn't deplete a family's financial resources. Oh, and it is forbidden to use any form of contraception. They also marry only within their own group, and since they live in a set geographic area, are relatively easy for researchers to investigate. For these reasons, they make ideal candidates to study the effects of aging of women on fertility. So what can we learn from this group? In women under the age of 25, only 3.5% of married Hutterite women never become pregnant. In women 30 to 35 years old, 11% never become pregnant. But in women 35 to 40, a whopping 33% could not have a baby. Think about that for a second. After turning 35, one out of three women who are constantly trying to get pregnant didn't have a pregnancy for five years. If we look at this in another way, the monthly probability for a woman to deliver a baby at age 35 is less than half of what it is at age 20. And at age 40, it is half of what it was at age 35. Also, look at this curve. There wasn't a gradual decline and then a huge drop off after age 40 like Adam's video suggests. The decline was more or less steady ever since age 20. Still not convinced? Let's look at another clip. So according to this author, 86% of women will get pregnant within one year at age 27 and 82% at age 37. Hmm, let's look a little closer. These statistics come from this study. 
So how was this study done? From 1992 through 1996, 782 women were recruited through seven European centers providing services on fertility awareness and natural family planning. However, unlike the Hutterite study where all married women were included, this study excluded couples who had known fertility problems. So the women who were most likely to not get pregnant were not included in the results. This of course gives an overestimate about how many women will actually get pregnant. Now you would think at this point that this study just counted how many women got pregnant in each age group. Not so much. They used this formula to predict the monthly probability of pregnancy. So, okay, it's not all real world data, but a complicated computer model. What did the model actually say? Like Adam said in the video, the model predicted that 13% of 27 to 34 year olds would have infertility, that is, not be able to get pregnant for one year. And for 35 to 39 year olds, it went up to 18%. However, the predictions in the computer model assumed that couples had intercourse twice a week, every week, for the entire five years. If you assume a frequency of intercourse of once per week, then the rates of infertility increase substantially to 15% for women aged 29 to 26 and 29% for women aged 35 to 39. Hold on, there's more bad news. That data only took into account the age of the woman. But what about the age of her partner? If a 35-year-old woman had a 40-year-old partner and they had intercourse once per week, only about half of those couples achieved a pregnancy within a year. In other words, the infertility rate in that group was 50%. So the numbers in Adam's video were sort of cherry-picked to give you the most optimistic predictions. Women without infertility, who have lots of intercourse with younger husbands. The real life numbers aren't quite so rosy. But okay, I sense that some of you are still not convinced. So let's look at one other type of study. For this, we're gonna go back to France, but not in the 1600s. Since couples have less intercourse as they get older, and older guys have some impact on a couple's chance for getting pregnant, we are going to eliminate those two variables by looking at the chance for pregnancy in women that are using donor sperm. So for women under the age of 35, about eight months of donor inseminations, close to 90% of them achieved a pregnancy. But in women aged 35 to 40, only about 60% achieved a pregnancy. So we can pretty confidently say that Adam's assertion that this data is only based on French census data from the 1600s is clearly wrong, and that fertility does decrease with age. And by the time a woman passes age 35, there has been a fairly deep decrease in her ability to have a baby. So let's move on. The video portrays doctors as a malevolent corporate entity trying to scare women about the impact of age on fertility so they can convince them to freeze their eggs, which he implies is very ineffective. I have already shown that the decline in fertility is real and significant, but let's discuss misleading statement number two. Egg freezing only has a 2-12% to chance of working. That's true, but misleading. Doctors use fertility medication to help women produce multiple eggs. This increases their chances for ultimately being able to have a baby with those eggs. But because fertility decreases with age, women who freeze their eggs when they are younger are more likely to have good quality eggs and be able to produce more eggs with fertility medications. So for women aged 30 to 34 at IVF1, we typically will get about 15 mature eggs. With this number of mature eggs, studies predict about a 75% probability for having at least one child, a 35% probability for having at least two children, and even a 12% probability for having at least three children. The more eggs you freeze, the higher the chance for having babies. But from age 35 to 37, the average number of eggs that we retrieve is down to 11. Those eggs aren't as good quality as younger eggs, so the likelihood for having at least one child 
is now down to 55%. The chance for at least two children is 20%, and the chance for at least three children is now down to about 5%. Now, it's true that many women who froze their eggs in the past have not yet used them. However, freezing technology has not been around that long, so many women have not gotten to the point in their lives where they want to get pregnant yet. The greater the time between when you freeze your eggs and when you decide to get pregnant, the greater the chance that egg freezing will help you. So, if you're freezing your eggs, but you're going to try to get pregnant next year, then there's probably not much benefit. But if you're a 25 year old and you're looking to start a family when you're 40, there will be a tremendous benefit. Don't be too hard on Adam. He's an entertainer, not a doctor. He does make some good points. You should not panic if your 35th birthday is next week. However, it is wise to keep in mind that your fertility is gradually decreasing and that you should make choices, if possible, to attempt pregnancy sooner rather than later. And if you think you are really going to delay childbearing, egg freezing is a reasonable thing to look into. One other recommendation. Don't go to your doctor if you want to hear good jokes and don't get your medical advice from comedians. Hi, Dr. Randy Morris here from Infertility TV. Don't forget to like this video. Click here to view more videos. Click here to subscribe. Click here if you are tired of all this and you just want to get pregnant already.